We've looked previously at uh, compound data in the form of p vectors and arrays, and there's a separate video about strings, which also fall into the category of compound data. In this video, we're going to look at uh, some of the behaviours of compound data. Let's look at something that uh, doesn't have any compound data in it. A simple thing here A gets a value. And B is initialized from A. We change A's value to 5 and we print out B. Of course, the question here is what do we get? Do we get a 4 or a 5? So let's look closer to this. By the way, you notice the heading here is uh, value semantics as opposed to reference semantics, and we'll see how this plays out. So we can see that um, A has got a memory box there that holds its value 4 and we're going to do this assignment of uh, B getting assigned from A's value and let's see what happens. So when an assignment happens the contents of A are copied over into B and so we see B has now got a 4 in it and it's a separate 4 independent of the 4 that's in A. So now when we change A's value to 5, we can see that it affects A but has absolutely no effect on B. That initial assignment of saying int B equals A, that just got done at the time. There was no lasting connection between B and A. Now let's do this again, and this time A and B will be P vectors. So A starts off um, with a P vector of components of 3 and 4, then A is assigned to B. Now we change the Y component of A and then we print out the corresponding Y component of B and again our question is just the same, do we get a 4 or a 5 printed out? So again let's have a look at what the memory diagram looks like. So here it's a uh, got a bit more to it when, than when we just had A just being an integer. Because A is a p-factor, it's, uh, it's pointing to a memory block that contains the p-vector information. So we can see it's got the 3 and the 4 that are the two parts of the p-vector that's A's value. And we can see that A holds a reference. We can think of it as a memory address. A holds a reference to that memory block. We know how to get from A to that memory block. And now we're going to do the assignment and we're going to do the same thing we did before with the integers. We're going to copy what's in A to B. And what is in A? It's just a reference to that memory block and so that's what gets copied over to B. So now we end up with this A and B are both pointing to the same memory block because all that co got copied across was the reference to the memory block. We didn't copy the, re the memory block itself. We didn't end up with another copy of that block. It's still just the one P vector memory block and A and B both reference it. So now when we change the Y component of A to 5 we can see that we're also changing the p-vector memory block that b is referencing. So not surprisingly, b comes out to be 5 as well. Now we move on to arrays and we get the same story here. Here we've got an array a, it's got some values 2, 3, 4, 7. We do our assignment of a getting assigned to b. We change the a2 element to be 5 <coughs> instead of the 4 that it is and we print out the B2 element and again the question is do we get a 4 or a 5 but we can see from the memory diagram just like with the P vectors that there is only one block that represents the array and we just have two references to it A and B are both pointing to the same thing so B of 2 is going to be 5 as well we're going to get 5 printed out And 
we're talking about assignment here, <clears throat> but assignment is also what happens when we pass values into functions. So you can see we've got three separate columns here. First column is looking where we've got and we've got the same function, well, essentially the same function foo in each of the columns. And foo's got a parameter b. And we can see down in setup, we're calling foo with the variable a. So what's happening here with all these cases is when the function foo gets invoked, we're doing an assignment of a getting assigned to b, like the red thing in the center of the page here. This is happening for all of them. So we're just doing the same assignment that we've just seen in the previous examples. And so it's the same thing happening here in that in the first case when b is an integer, when we do the b++, it has no effect on a. But then when b is the p vector or the array, then just like we saw before, a and b point to the same thing in memory, either the same p vector or the same array. And so we can see in the second and third cases, we do in fact see a change in A. And so we get a 5 printed out instead of a 4, just like we saw before. And all the memory diagrams we saw before apply exactly here to show exactly the same thing. And one else, another thing we should cover with uh, references is that we've seen we can write p vector p equals new p vector 3 4 all in one line but often we don't want to do it in one line there's some reason to do it separately but we ask well after we've done the first line what value does p have and it does have a default value of null and we can draw a little memory diagram for it there and show p it's got a value of null inside it and null just indicates that this reference isn't a reference to anything. It's like an empty reference. And we say, you know, it's, it's a null reference. And we just and use the word null to refer to it. So it doesn't point to anything. It just doesn't, it's not a pointer at all. It's just, it's an absence of pointers. It's an absence of reference, just a null. So as I say there in the second point, a null p vector is not really a p vector because you can't do anything to it. If, if p is null, then p.x doesn't mean anything because p doesn't reference any memory block that is a, is a p vector. So null, you just can't do anything with it. And likewise, if you've got a null array, then you can't do anything with that either. If you want to say, well, how long is that null array? Well, it's not an empty array. It's just not an array. It's an absence of an array. And so when we say um, if A is null, A is an array um, of type array and it's null, then A dot length, we can't do that. We can't say, oh, has it got zero length? Because A is null, it's not an array yet, and so A dot length will give us an error. 